Hi. It's, it's really hard to talk with the mask on. <laughs> Sorry. Hi. Uh, my name is Santa. And then uh, today I am going to show you how to make sushi. Uh, it's a real basic stuff for now. Uh, uh, sushi, uh, uh, I think most important thing for the sushi making is uh, rice. So I'm going to start showing how to make a sushi rice. Uh, I have a cooked rice here, which is really hot. And the reason why you have to have a hot rice when you mix with the vinegar, the vinegar absorbs the uh, <clears throat> inside the uh, rice better in, uh, compared to using regular, just uh, warm rice. And this is the sushi vinegar uh, made with uh, vinegar, salt, and sugar. And then I soak uh, help inside the vinegar for like, uh, few days. So the kelp flavor goes inside the vinegar will give you more umami to it. So <clears throat> this type of the rice vinegar is uh, we call the akazu. It's, uh, it's not really like clear. It's kind of like a red color. They usually used in the Tokyo area originally. And then when you mix the rice, and some people use a stainless steel bowl, but traditionally you have to use this type of a uzun bowl. So the reason why I'm using this uh, excess uh, moisture from the vinegar uh, goes into the wood, and then we don't have like a mushy rice. Rather. So when I cook the rice, the rice is a little bit on the harder side because you have to add vinegar. And then after you mix, you have to leave this till almost become your body temperature, about 97.5 degrees. So for now, I'm just going to leave this and then show you how to do some fish. Today, I brought ahi. And then I have salmon, and then I have hamachi. <clears throat> so, in order to uh, make sushi, you need to make the slice. The size of the fish should be about four finger things, because it's on your finger, and then make and then. What width is about this? So, when you slice, the first slice is a little different, difficult to make. The second slice, like this, you can make the sushi this way. And same thing as amachi. This one, okay. Keep the same angle, okay, and then the salmon. This salmon is a uh, uh, <clears throat> Tasmanian king salmon. Um, we cure this with salt, or just put tons of salt all over the salmon, and then leave that for about two hours. So they take out excess moisture from there. And then, so it's kind of like after you wash it, and then you gotta freeze for 48 hours to kill all the, you know, whatever the bacteria is. And it's the meat gets firmer this way. And uh, the taste is more accentuated. So this is how you cut the sushi piece. And then, and I also make, today I was gonna make Spicy tuna for the roll. So, just gonna make a <clears throat> you can use a food processor instead of using the knife. 
I'm going to make this spicy tuna there. Okay. okay, and then let me go check the rice. When the rice is too hot, you can mold, mold it. So, how about water? Wet your hands. And then grab, but see the rice too hot. So, I can't make sushi yet, so you need to wait a little while, okay? And then so I'm just gonna spread a little bit more. <clears throat> and today I'm gonna make the uh, nigiri and some California roll, uh, which is most of the place use the crab. Well, today I brought the imitation crab, but uh, we usually use the real crab at the restaurant. Uh, and then a cucumber, Japanese cucumber and the avocado and then so just need to cut avocado like this and also when you make a roll you need a nori to the seaweed Let me show you. My hands are wet, the heart open. Show you something. The nori has two sides. One is shiny, the other one is the rough side. So you always put the rice on the rough side, not the shiny side. So, and then it's not really square, it's a rectangle. So when you make a roll, you make this way, long side goes up, not wide, wide in this way. So when you cut the nori, you see these lines here? Nori has a little line here. This width of the line, uh, when you eat like a ikura sushi, or you know those battleship one, they have the, the height of the, those uh, nori is this one line. So, when you, I'm gonna make the easiest way. So, <clears throat> you wanna leave about two of this line. So, I'm gonna cut like this. And then, this is gonna be half. All right, and then this is gonna make the roll. Okay. So when you make the roll, I think I can make the roll. So grab the rice. You kind of like measure the rice like this. It should be about four ounces. And then spread the rice over the nori from one side to the other, and then spread down this way. Yeah. Sorry, but rice is a little bit too warm, but I think I can manage. And then, so like uh, say cucumber roll, you put a piece of a cucumber, by the way, the length of this nori is 7.5 inches. And uh, I cut this cucumber 3.75. The reason why I don't cut the nori 7.5, I mean uh, <clears throat> cucumber 7.5, cucumber is not always straight. So it's easier to cut half of the nori side and they put two together. So I guess we need two of those and then hold that nori this edge and then go like this. Make sure you meet. And then you flip over one side and squeeze from the top, just like making the square. 
And now you see the goals here. Okay. I'm gonna leave this aside for now. And then watch my finger. So, grab the rice for like uh, nigiri. This weighs about 0.7 ounce. And you, you have like size of two finger in between like this. And then you make the little hookah with your uh, thumb to make the kind of like air you know, flip over. And then you kind of close back and forth, tighten, tighten, and then tighten, tighten to make the shape like this. But when you make this, say like you have the same amount of rice. Let's see. This is the same amount of rice. Okay. But if you make the rice too like tight, like a musubi, you make squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. The size is a little different. And when you eat this kind of sushi, it doesn't taste good. So when you eat sushi, <clears throat> the rice should be hard enough to fall together, but not too hard to be like this. So when you put the uh, uh, topping and the rice and put it in the mouth, they should melt each other. That's how it should be. Yeah. So now, this one is, I'm gonna make the, this is the bottle ship one. So let's use this. Wrap the nori like this. See how you make. I brought some ikura. So this is like easiest thing. Just put it on. That's how you bake ikura sushi. And then uh, you know, start making the other sushi. So grab the rice. Some, some chef grab a lot of rice and then just keep throwing away the rice. But I mean, after, so let's say like you grab the fish with a two finger, don't touch the rice, I mean the fish too much because it's get warm. And then as you have the rice ready, you put it on, same thing. And then most people flip over this way, but always I have trouble flipping over this way. So I just use this way. And then do the same thing when you make more, same thing like this. So it become like this. Then you look at the rice. I mean, so it's more like almost same kind of stuff. Yeah. This is how you make this. Then when you go to the restaurant, you see the sushi they give you. They don't give you sushi this way. They usually uh, slant it one way because when they use chopstick, this way is easier to grab. That's why they put it on kind of like this way. Yeah. So I make the hamachi. Same thing. Make the side. Put it on the fish. Nice is a little bit too warm. Hard to make a bowl. And then the salmon. Okay, and then 
Yeah, I'm gonna make a spicy tuna. In this bowl. <clears throat> See the Vietnamese hot sauce. And then mayonnaise. I put the mayo with a little bit soy sauce and medium. And then a little bit of the sesame oil. Not too much, just a little flavor. And this is optional, but you can put the orange egg. Okay. And then you can mix together. Okay, now. I'm gonna make the reverse roll. I see a little bit better now. Okay. Same amount of rice, about four ones. Make sure you have a little edge. Deep, deep the edge a little bit. And put this to flip over. And then the fish. And a cup of cucumber. This one's kind of like rolling into like this. Not medium, but kind of go into the. And I use this thing for it. This people usually use the regular. Uh, what is they they use this to make them, but then you need to have a salon lap or something to put it on. Otherwise, they stick or stick together. So I bought this from uh, Don Quixote, and. Uh, Kind of stiff, but I cut to the side so I can just squeeze like this. I don't need to bother with the other stuff. Okay. And then now I will make a California roll. Hmm? Oh, how do I run? Um, I start making sushi. Uh, about five years ago, yeah. Actually, you know, my my partner at the restaurant, he used to work for Yanagi Sushi. He was a like a head chef, and uh, so I learned from him how to make sushi. Took me about about two years to figure out how to do. Yeah, first. You know, first time everybody the same thing, you know, kind of hard, yeah, yeah. But <clears throat> get used to it. So you put the mayo. And the crab. Cucumber. So those, this imitation crab, amazingly, the size is half of the nori. I just figured out. <laughs> and so you kind of like meet end of the, in, the in ingredient, then you kind of flip, not like the regular cut style. And then you kind of put this on. Okay. Yeah. And now it's time for cutting the fish in the bowl. So you have the knife. You kind of wet the knife, tip of the knife, not the whole thing. Then go like this. So the water slipped down here. You see the water dripping now? That's the lubrication for the rice. I mean, for this cutting fish. So as you go, it's get more stickier. So you gotta sometimes wipe it. And then lubricate. No. Okay. 
Okay. Oh, great. To the to see this and cut the cucumber roll. So regular style cut uh, roll, usually cut in half, and then cutting a total of six pieces. No. Varnish. Uh, some people like lots of wasabi. Okay. Let's do that. And then, <clears throat> I'm gonna make that sushi. Oops. Spicy tuna. So I have to keep wiping because of the mayonnaise cannot come out from the fish. <clears throat> yeah. yeah. I have a student asking mm -hmm. if you can explain the angle angle of angle of I guess we put honey of the Fish or roll? When you plate, uh, so this, when you have like chopstick, and the customer, you give it to customer. Oh, when you give it to customer, so usually they use right hand rub. So if the sushi is facing this way, most people are right-handed, so it's kind of hard to grab the sushi. That's why you put the sushi on this angle. That's the reason, yeah. Okay, and then we finish up with the rest of the stuff. Oops. Anyway, um, I'll tell you about my story a little bit. Um, I grew up in a really countryside of Japan, or the uh, mountain with a little stream. Is, um, and not much going on in my life, early days. And after I graduate high school, I don't know what to do. So I say, well, I wanna go to Tokyo. I decided to go to university in Tokyo, not the Tokyo University, but one of the universities in Tokyo. And I wasn't sure what to do with my life. So I have four years to think about my life, but that's what it was. But something like uh, once you get into the university, nobody really studies in Japan. They don't really care. And the uh, only problem, is I didn't have much money, so, and I stayed in the dorm, and they said, they give me a free meal, I mean, two meals per day, which is good, and it cost me only like $300 a month, so that was a good deal. And the problem was, they, when the summertime come, they closed the dorm, because no school, no dorm. So, I cannot go back to my town, because I don't have money, it cost me about, $300 to go back. It take me about 10 hours those days. Yeah. Even with the bread train. 
Yeah. So I decided, oh my God, I don't know what to do. So well, I look at the bulletin board and there's a job there. Oh, pay you $5 per hour. Okay, not bad. Okay, and then place to stay, two meal. Okay, good, I take it. <laughs> <laughs> That's how I start um, a restaurant business. I mean, got into the restaurant business. I, then uh, after a week or so, I worked there, and the manager that time, he just quit. Like, um, I'm gonna quit today. Do the rest for me. What? I just started like one week ago. <laughs> then, so like, I couldn't do anything, but somehow I lasted there for four years. And then after four years, they, I graduate the university and then, they told me, oh, we opened a branch in Hawaii. So I need a manager. So they say, okay, you go in there. Oh, me? Okay. But they say, I don't really speak English. I don't really understand. That's okay. Over there, everybody speaks Japanese. Huh? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so I came here and nobody speaks Japanese. <laughs> I went to the bank trying to deposit some money. I didn't know the word of, say, deposit. So I keep going to Terra and Toto, Toto. Terra goes, huh? <laughs> What's Toto? <laughs> so, so I write down what I want to say. Here, oh, deposit. Okay. <laughs> Something like, yeah, that happened. So it took me like two years to figure out how to, what people were saying to me. That's the hardest part. I want to say something, but I couldn't understand what you're saying. Yeah. Then I met my wife, um, which, which is, uh, she's uh, Italian, not Japanese, <laughs> uh, Caucasian, Italian English. Yeah. Uh, and uh, so I married her for 33 years now, since uh, 87. Yeah. And then we got two kids and then one is, working against me, Restaurant Opportunity Center, which is improve the employee benefit. <laughs> <laughs> Pay more to the employee, yeah. <laughs> and the other one is uh, at the medical school uh, right now. Uh, she graduated from uh, Ivy League school, came back here and got a job, but she said, doesn't pay me well enough. I gotta do something else. So she decided to go back to school. <laughs> so pretty soon, two more years. And my wife is, uh, used to be an uh, architecture, architect. And uh, she used to work for big architect firm, architecture firm. And uh, because of the recession, whatever, paid off. And she went back to school again and got the degree in teaching. So that's why now she teaches at uh, Karani High School, uh, cooking. Yes. Hi. And I have to go there sometime for demonstration. <laughs> in fact, I just did something like this with in my kitchen, with how to you know cut the vegetable and that stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's kind of like my like kind of weird. <laughs> I never went to cooking school, so <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I have a uh, lots of cookbook, probably like five hundred of them. Not, not only Japanese, but like all different types of people. Yeah. So I like to look at it and then study and try. Sometimes make awful food. <laughs> <laughs> now, okay. Yeah, a little bit better now. Before, nine out of 10 was really bad. <laughs> maybe it's now is maybe two out of 10 bad. <laughs> yeah. Thank you for. Uh, inviting me today. Thank you so much. Yes. Sorry. Yeah. Um, one thing that Jerry asked is there any reason why or why do you cut a certain amount of um, a roll into six pieces or oh. why not nine pieces? Or <laughs> yeah, it's kind of hard to do five or nine. Yeah, it's easier because. Usually uh, cut in half, and I don't know. I don't exactly know why, but 
usually those regular roll cut is six pieces. And some people ask maybe cutting a small piece is better for the kids. But at the restaurant, most of the place is six pieces. And the inside out roll, some people just use six pieces, but we do eight pieces. And then the, for the one thing is the campio. I don't know what the campio, uh, like a, like a girl, cooked girl, like a vegetable, like a skin of this uh, girl. And I don't know, they, they're only cutting four pieces. I don't know the reason why, but <laughs> <laughs> that's how traditionally, yeah, I never look into the thing. Yeah. Oh, uh, our location is uh, Kapafuru Avenue, old uh, Hihim Plaza, second floor. Um, and then the menu is uh, izakaya style. So like we have sushi and grill stuff, yakitori, uh, fry stuff, tempura or tonkatsu, and all the small kukus like uh, sauteed vegetable. And also I started making uh, my own fake kitchen, start making the uh, fake chicken and uh, fake shrimp. <laughs> and uh, uh, so right now, I don't know, I not much going on at the restaurants. I have a lot of time. That's why I'm trying to develop new type of a vegan menu because I've been vegan for over two years. And my diet is not really the fried food diet. So I just eat like whole food, plant-based diet. So don't eat much oil. Yeah, that's why I lost a lot of weight. I used to weigh 220 pounds. Uh, now I weigh 155. Yeah. Yeah. And still don't have my hair. Though. <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, sake is like, uh, we had this, I, we carry about 20 different types of sake at the restaurant. And um, I used to drink a lot of different sake. Um, so customer asked for like, oh, what is good and what is bad? Like what's dry, what's more true flavor? So I took a seminar from the sake school of America. And uh, you know, they give you the test and pass the test and they give you credential. <laughs> and the wine thing is like, uh, I used to drink lots of wine too. So <laughs> and all different types of wine. And uh, at the restaurant, we had so many different uh, people come from the other restaurant. So they bring their own wine. Well, they're my friends. I don't charge coke. So, and they, oh, sounds like, try this, try this, try this. And then, you know, I don't know, after five, I don't know which one's which. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, so uh, this uh, distributor had a class for uh, like a, Society of uh, Wine Educators. So it's not, it's kind of like a sommelier, but a little different. So I say, okay, you, you go take the class. Class is free, but you gotta pay the exam. Okay, so I took about three months class and I passed the test, pay 300. And so I, now I have wine credits, credential. That's what it is, <laughs> yeah. That's came out of my hobby, drinking. <laughs> Yes, go ahead, yeah. Uh, how long would it take you to become like, like, uh, comfortable at having the rice? You felt like good at having the rice? Uh, you mean like... I guess like when you're like, making like a nigiri and, and pouring oh. it. And... Oh, I mean, so you don't really have to look at what you're doing. like. Right. Right. In some way, uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, it takes about three years, maybe. Three years? Yeah, maybe, yeah. Actually, oops. Oh, sorry. Oh. Actually, the, um, so, uh, bobbing rice is not much, but the uh, hardest part is handling, you know, cutting the fish, like uh, fillet the fish and that kind of stuff takes time yeah you need like uh, you buy you don't buy the 
archie like this, we, we buy the block. So with the skin, so you, you don't want to waste a lot of stuff. You gotta take the blood off. Uh, you have to have a, like a side. So kind of slice sideways, straight, and then cut this way. And so try not to make any waste. That's the main concern. And some of the menu we have at the restaurant uh, is like, let's say salmon. We used to have, we buy the salmon with a head, uh, color, skin, everything. So <clears throat> this is what I did at the Kauai Community College. Use all, all part of salmon, no waste. Uh, except the bone, but uh, so fillet the salmon in the skin, uh, you grill the skin, and then we used to have lots of salmon skin. Not much going on with the skin. So nobody ordered. We had the salmon skin salad, but just a plain old salmon skin salad. But then it came up with a new type of salmon skin salad with a tofu and uh, this and a little mayonnaise and a little spice. And, came out like one of the best sellers. And I don't have any salmon skin. I have a lot of meat, but no skin. That's a situation I have. <laughs> yeah, yeah, something like that, yeah. And uh, so like ahi, say like, I don't know why so ahi is expensive now. Yesterday I went to the store, $40 a pound, crazy. But anyway, so kind of waste ahi. So once you kind of serve it, I'm going to boil this and then put in the food processor with uh, uh, mayo and a liquid smoke and I'll show you and the sugar and then kind of like blend them up and you make a paste. You know like uh, 12 Avenue grill, they sell those smoke ahi, almost the same thing, yeah. So that way I don't need to throw away the, you know, the fish and then we just use for the house fuku or we even make a roll and some people even order. So we make some more money. <laughs> That's the kind of attitude I have toward my food. I try not to buy rather really expensive stuff. <laughs> How did you get the nickname Santa Oh, uh, it's nothing to do with Santa Claus. <laughs> uh, my son means, uh, my last name is Miyoshi. So the Chinese character is number three. And then in my high school days, there was another Miyoshi in my class. And uh, he was small, really small, like five, three, and the way like 120. And so then, you know, classroom is like 40 people in there and sometimes they change the seat. So they used to write my name and then big, and then the other guy small. But since you are fat, I'm gonna give you another extra thing for you can be a Miyoshi fat. So that becomes sun and fat is ha. That's how it came, Santa. Yeah, go ahead. What is your like when you're home? What's your favorite thing you go for or eat at home? Uh I usually eat um, lots of greens, uh, boiled greens, like uh, choy sum or kale and uh, like spinach or um, any, any type of green. And uh, as a, a starch, brown rice uh, or like a sweet potato, steam. I have an Instapot, so I just bring the Instapot, sweet potato, cook fast. And then like sometimes make curry, Indian style curry, but I don't use any oil when I cook. Almost zero oil. <laughs> um, That's why my wife doesn't eat my food. So in the refrigerator, my section and my wife's section. <laughs> and my dog section. <laughs> Uh, <clears throat> that is uh, really bad. Um, well, 
not only the customer, but the, even the employee, you ask them to come to work and then some people don't want to come back to work because they expose yourself to some other people. Even, especially they have kids or young, you know, say, oh, I don't want to, you know, contaminate my family. So that's not another thing uh, besides slow, slow down on the business. Because if you're doing just a takeout to begin with, maybe okay. But then you sit down, play, and da 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 da. It's really hard. <laughs> Gotta change the menu. Um, we have a question. Have you ever eaten in or prepared fugu? Yeah. I ate. Uh, fugu, just like uh, haribat, uh, you know, the white meat, and, but really tough. So they use, this, this, use different knives. This is regular sashimi knife, but uh, they have special one for fugu. And then they cut really thin. I used to you know, work in a restaurant in Tokyo. They, sometimes they serve fugu and uh, big plate like this. And then so thin slice all around. And then this small restaurant came in, two people. They, they took like two or three bites, they finished the whole plate. <laughs> and then uh, for the uh, bone part, you know, in the middle has a little bone, doesn't look like a regular fish, but bone has a little meat, so we cook that in the nabe, and then it kind of like chew the bone. That was good. That's, that's our meal, because <laughs> they don't sell that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, well, they have cooking school, but just like here, maybe two years, and you learn a lot of stuff, but very shallow. So dep maybe depends on what you want to do. Maybe you would go to the cooking school is one way because they have some connection to the restaurant. So you tell the instructor, I want to be a French chef or Chinese chef. So they probably recommend you to send you some restaurant they, they know. That's maybe one way, or you know somebody in Japan. Actually, one of my workers used to work at the city, he was a <clears throat> Parani graduate. He started work here when he was like 16 years old. And when he became 20, he moved to Japan. He wanted to learn more. So now he's working at the sushi shop in Tokyo. Well, there are two questions that I'm going to kind of combine. Yeah. Um, how has Hawaii and I guess specifically like the Japanese culture in Hawaii affected or how is it different from, from maybe what you grew up with and how has that affected the way that you cook or your menu? Uh, I guess when I first came here, it was like eight, 1984. I went to a Japanese restaurant and I was surprised. I, it's like, is this really Japanese food? <laughs> <laughs> but then uh, when the bubble time came, a lot of people from Japan, a lot of restaurants came from Japan. So they, their standard came way up. Since then, I don't know, like even you go to Don Quixote, uh, you see more Japanese stuff. Most of the stuff you can buy here. Before, trying to find the Japanese cucumber, that was impossible. They used <laughs> zucchini. <laughs> it was zucchini. <laughs> yeah. So, I guess now, for, uh, I like the Hawaii, you know, the atmosphere because they have so many different culture here, like, uh, uh, different type of restaurant, and then kind of like a mingle. You go to Italian, it's still, it's, you see some Japanese influence, and then you go to Japanese, you see some French influence. So I think it's more fun now than way, you know, those days. Yeah. Um, what advice would you give to someone who wants to start 
that we created using Hawaii specific ingredients? Hawaii specific, uh, like uh, Hawaii's own? Like, yeah, I guess like produce or? Like, yeah, I guess produce or, yeah. Mm. Or is that something that you try to focus on in your restaurant? Mm. Well, um, trying to use local stuff. I just went to OTG farm uh, last week, Saturday, to you know see what they have. Um, I used to buy the daikon from them, and then <clears throat> I like the beef part of the daikon. Uh, you just branch it and chop up, and then put uh, Hawaiian salt and sesame oil, and then mix together with the rice and the daikon leaf. It make good That was really good. And then uh, also we have a lot of eggplant from uh, Kafuku. Yeah, we, we use lots of egg. We make eggplant dishes like uh, miso sauce. Uh, one of the stuff is uh, deep fried eggplant. And then we use three different types of miso. One is like awase, which is like used for the miso soup. And then one is the taikyo. It's a white miso from uh, Kyoto. Uh, like, uh, you know, when you make a butter fish miso, uh, that's the type of miso you need. And then the uh, other one is for uh, um, akadashi or uh, it's a da really dark miso from uh, Aichi Prefecture. And uh, those are, uh, they usually make miso soup or like uh, when you go to Nagoya area, they make the tonkatsu with the miso sauce, a dark that brown color miso. So I make three different miso sauce. Each one has a little different flavor. When you play them, um, you know, trying to be more French that way, uh, you put it in the squeeze bottle and then little line and go make a design. So it looks better than just put the miso over the, not even the <laughs> thing. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> of course you can. <laughs> I don't know if you really want to do that. <laughs> Too much bad influence from me. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Uh, I just wanted to say thank you all for attending. Um, I hope a whole lot of you are super happy with everything that you got today. And I want to thank um, Haley and Chef Santa for coming and everyone else for making this a wonderful student assembly. <laughs>